Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, and your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self. Glory to God forevermore. <clears throat> Praise God. Mm. All right, tonight we're looking at being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. We began to lay some foundations yesterday, and I'm just going to continue building on that tonight. And it's just a joy to be able to fellowship in the things of the Spirit. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18. Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. And doesn't start a statement. So let's begin from verse 16, the pretext. Verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Next verse. Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. 18. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He gives an instruction. Be filled with the Spirit. It's an instruction. It's not an advice. Be filled with the Spirit. Look at verse 19 and 20 of Ephesians chapter 5. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives an instruction. He says, be filled with the Spirit. So we're going to study scriptures and see what it means to be filled with the Spirit. Remember, yesterday we began to look at how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Just before I get into, you know, what we want to share tonight, let me give you a quick recap. The book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 1. Acts, chapter 19, verse number 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Next verse. We're going to verse 6. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Verse 3. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues, and prophesied so we said number one in getting people filled with the spirit you have to give them information that's number one give them information take time to explain what you are teaching on the holy spirit brother paul took time to explain the baptism of john to explain jesus and then explain the holy ghost so you must take time to explain number two we say information will always carry instructions information will always carry instruction in getting people filled with the spirit you give them instructions and after you have clearly explained the instructions to them then you lay hands on them you lay hands on them and let the people know that they also have a responsibility to receive they will have to receive they have to open their mouth and speak acts chapter 2 verse 4 acts chapter 2 verse number 4 and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they have a responsibility to receive and open their mouth and speak. The Holy Ghost does not open your mouth for you. You will have to open your mouth yourself and begin to speak by faith. All right? If he says he is going to come out of you, then he will surely come out of you. Rivers of living water. Now, next one is ensure there is an experience to it with practice. When getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, ensure that there is an experience. After you share with them and minister to them, and, and you know, you lay hands on them and make sure they receive the Spirit. All right? 
grace gets more effective with practice especially those of us who are called to minister to people we must practice it's not enough to just you know just talk we've got to get lay hands on them minister to them make sure they receive of the spirit ensure also that there is no confusing crowd no confusing crowd when ministering the baptism of the holy ghost to people make sure there is no confusing crowd any intelligent minister deals with the confusing crowd you know it's like brother paul ministered and when he discovered the crowd was mixed he separated the disciples from the others so make sure there is no confusing crowd jesus will always send them out remember when he came to the house of the lady that was dead and and the mourners were mourning and crying as soon as jesus entered and said she will live again they started laughing they turned their la their cry to laughter and the Bible says Jesus ordered them out of the place. So you've got to separate them from the confusing crowd. All right, let the audience know that tongues is not a human language. Tongues is not a human language. What the person is speaking may sound like gibberish, but it is supernatural. Tongue is not a human language. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 14 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Tongues are unknown to humans. It's the language of the supernatural. For no man understandeth him. How be it? In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. It's very important to know that tongues are not human language. They are supernatural. They are supernatural language. Then the next one is, it is very vital to minister to people once they get born again. Once you get them born again, get them baptized with the Holy Ghost at once. Don't delay it. Get them baptized with the Holy Ghost at once. There's something about that salvation faith. You just use that their salvation faith and get them to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you know, when we say the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we are talking about utterance. We are talking about utterance, speaking in tongues. We are talking about speaking in tongues. Now, where a person has been saved for long and he has never spoken in tongues, you must answer all his probing questions. The reason why many people get born again and stay in church for many years and are not speaking in tongues is because, first of all, it was not taught them well. Then secondly, they have questions that nobody has been able to answer. So every time you, they, they think about receiving the Holy Spirit, those questions, you know, become a hindrance. Every time they think of being filled with the spirit of the baptism of the spirit, those their questions become a blockage. So you have to take time with people that have been Christians for a long time. You have to take time and deal with the probing questions that may arise in their hearts. Someone says, how do I know if my tongues are fake? Like I said yesterday, are you a fake believer? Well, if your salvation is fake, then maybe your tongues will be fake. But if your salvation is genuine, your tongues cannot be fake. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 11 where we read, he said, you cannot ask a father for bread and he gives you a stone. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Look at the next verse. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? 13. 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? If you ask the father for the Holy Spirit, what will you receive? holy spirit you cannot ask the father for holy spirit and an evil spirit take over no just like you cannot ask your father for bread and he gives you a stone if human beings that are evil compared to god do not give stone for bread how much more your father in heaven he will give the holy spirit to them that ask him that is assuring the next thing is lay, learn to lay hands remember laying hands is not just the head you can touch the hand you can touch the shoulder but you must lay hands on people that are receiving the holy spirit Num number number seven or so guide the recipient guide the person when the person begins to receive and the person begins to speak and the person is not sure give him confidence yes that's it that's right go ahead go ahead that's it that's it that's it don't stop go ahead that, that gives him confidence to continue speaking and flow. 
Can somebody shout a good amen? We are not just teaching you for yourself. We are teaching you so that you can effectively be a blessing to other people. Alright, that's very, very important. And when the person is speaking tongues, speak with him to help him. You too, be in speaking mode to help the person. Alright, now, it's also important to get the people to interpret their tongues at the point they are receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To interpret means just the same way you speak the tongues. The same way you spoke in tongues, when you speak, speak it in English. When you speak in tongues, Listen to your spirit. Listen to your spirit. As you're speaking, you will understand what you're speaking. You interpret in English. From the first day, learn to interpret. Remember, speaking in tongues plus interpretation equals to prophecy. Equals to prophecy. So, when you begin to speak, also the same faith with which you spoke is the same faith with which you interpret. Let him that speak in tongues also pray that he may interpret that's what brother paul said i will pray in the spirit and i will pray with my understanding also that is i will speak and i will interpret <clears throat> when you help people do that it will help them to grow in spirituals when people start you know speaking in tongues and interpreting or prophesying from the one it will help them to grow in the things of the spirit can somebody shout hallelujah? And you can get somebody baptized with the Holy Ghost on telephone. You can call somebody on phone, minister to him on phone and get him to speak in tongues. I've done that many, many times across continents of the world. You just give the person instructions, show him scripture, minister to him and just ask him to begin and that's it. The person is gone. The person is already speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. It's better to have spirit-filled believers, tongue-talking believers, than have believers who are not sure if the supernatural is real. Because speaking in tongues is the doorway to the supernatural. Speaking in tongues is the doorway to the things of the spirit. It's better to have believers filled with the spirit than have believers who, are, who, are, who, who don't understand spiritual things. So when we talk about spiritual things, they'll just be looking at you. It's better to have people to come into the supernatural. And it comes by practice. It comes by practice. You get them to speak in tongues. You get them to interpret. You get them to prophesy. You begin to teach them from the word of God, precept upon precept. And I'm going to do a lot of that teaching this week, the whole of this week, on being filled with the spirit. And we shall look at a lot of supernatural things from the word of God. Remember, like I said yesterday, when you get people filled with the Holy Ghost, there are two gifts in operation. The gift of faith and the working of miracles. Because tonguing is the working of miracles. All right, To receive is the gift of faith. So two gifts are in operation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. And you know there's something about the right atmosphere. When you get people filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, and the gifts begin to operate, you know, uh, you, you just find out that people can do a lot of, a lot of things, supernatural things, if you, just, if you just unlock them and open them up to this dimension. You just open them up to this dimension. Alright? And it's important to know that honor will always receive from God. In people receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they must have an attitude of honor. Because honor will always receive from God. Honor will always receive from God. Hallelujah. Remember, what you don't respect, you cannot attract. You can only attract what you respect. And that's why it's important to honor, to be people of honor. Honor must be your lifestyle. God can never put you in a position you don't respect. God can never put you in a position that you don't respect. We saw Jesus couldn't do much in his hometown because of their unbelief. They were walking in disrespect and dishonor. Dishonor is very costly. It's very, very costly. All right? And uh, I have said to people, and I think I've said it in this church, if, 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 if there's a grace at work in a ministry and you can't see it in your life, do an honor check. If you find out that grace is available in a ministry and you yourself, you're the only one that is in a dry land, do an honor check because you may have entered dishonor and cut yourself off from the supply of grace. Check your honor system. See, am I really living in honor? Have I put up an attitude I shouldn't put up? Am I, am I in rebellion? Am I disobedient? Am I taking things for granted? Am I looking, dealing with spiritual things as common? Just do a, an honor check because sometimes somebody can be in dishonor and not even know it. 
one of the ways to know that you are in dishonor is if you find out that the grace available in the ministry, everybody is doing well and thriving well. You are the only one that is not doing well. You need to do an honor check. It's very, very important. Can somebody shout hallelujah? All right, so let's examine what it means to be filled with the spirit. What it means to be filled with the spirit. That means I must be filled with the spirit. Because the Bible says I should be filled with the spirit. And we are looking at the subject of being filled with the spirit. Now before I go ahead, this letter was written to the church in Ephesus. So let's back up. If Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. Ephesians chapter 1 verse number 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. In other words, he is writing to the church located in Ephesus. If you go to Acts chapter 19 where we just read, you will discover something happened in that church. Because prior to this period, Paul was in Corinth. Then he came to Ephesus and he met certain disciples from what we read. That the, then he asked them a question. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And I will explain that in details because that statement sounds like you can believe and not receive the Holy Ghost. But that's not what brother Paul implied. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? If it's not well explained, you would think that somebody can believe and after believing, then he will now look for the Holy Ghost. Alright, so we need to do some explanation of that statement. Because that's not the implication. Alright, then the Bible tells us in that Acts chapter 19 verse 4. Let's look at verse 4, 5 and 6. Acts 19, 4, 5 and 6. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. To be baptized here means they were born again. They were immersed into Christ. They were immersed into Jesus. Now after being born again, look at the next verse 6. Verse 6, 19, 6 Acts. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues. And what was the next thing they did? And prophesied. So in other words, there was a ministry of the spirit in this church at Ephesus. And if there was a ministry of the spirit, when then giving an instruction to them to be filled with the spirit. If there was a ministry of the spirit at Ephesus, why did brother Paul in chapter 5, remember they were filled with the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 19, these brethren at Ephesus. But then in chapter 5 of Ephesians, he now said to them, be filled with the spirit. Now, go to Acts chapter 2 because Acts chapter 2 is a very popular place where a lot of people read their confusion from. They read their confusion. Especially when they read the, the scriptures says, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues as of fire. Then he now says, and they heard them speak in their language. So they now say, well, if the Holy Spirit that Christians claim to have today is the real one why are they not speaking japanese chinese korean without learning it and that is confusion because they have read but they read their thoughts into the scripture they did not read the scriptures with the scriptures as to arrive at an understanding now please listen very careful this is where the pentecostal movement came from the pentecostal movement you know, so, you know, some people are Pentecostal Christians without even knowing what Pentecost is. Yeah, some people say I'm a Pentecostal, but they don't even know what Pentecost is. So look at Acts chapter 2 verse 1. Acts chapter 2 verse number 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Next verse. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and he sat upon each of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. The day of Pentecost, the Jews understand what it means, very simply. 
The day of Pentecost is a feast of the Jews that is celebrated nine days after Passover. In other words, they were feasting on that day. It was an annual feast. A feast like the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was another feast in Israel called the Feast of Atonement. Then you have the Feast of Sabbath. Then you have the Feast of First Fruits. You know, then you also have the feast of the Passover. Now, when the Passover happens in Israel, you count 49 days. On the 50th day is the feast of Pentecost. 49 days after Passover. It was an annual event in Israel, which is called the feast of weeks or the feast of first fruits. Where they bring in the barley harvest, the increase of their field, and all, all of that. It's a Jewish feast understood by Jews. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, it means 49 days after Passover was Pentecost. So don't attach any mysterious meaning to the word Pentecost. There's nothing mysterious to that word Pentecost. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, follow me. As in the days of Pentecost, fire follow me. As in the days of Pentecost. Which of the Pentecost? Because there were many Pentecost. Pentecost was a yearly feast. Yearly feast. Yearly feast. So if you are asking for Holy Ghost fire like in Pentecost, which of the Pentecost? Meaning there should be nothing mysterious about the day of Pentecost. The real deal is the outpouring of the Spirit. Because Pentecost was celebrated every year. So in this particular Pentecost, things were different. But there was even Pentecost after the day of Pentecost. Okay, there was another Pentecost. And the next Pentecost, the Holy Ghost didn't come in the next Pentecost. Look at Acts 20, 15. Let's see it together. Acts chapter 20, verse number 15. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trigulium. And the next day we came to Miletus. Next verse. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus. Because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. This was Pentecost after Acts chapter 2. This was Acts chapter 20. Another scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse number eight <clears throat> but at i will tarry at ephesus until pentecost i will tarry at ephesus until pentecost the reason why i'm reading is just to let you know that pentecost is not mysterious it's just a yearly feast of the jews so pentecost was a feast of the jews but it coincided with a divine arrangement that particular Pentecost happened after Jesus died and rose from the dead. And somebody said to me somewhere, are you a Pentecostal? Mm, I'm simply a Catholic. I'm simply a Catholic because Catholic simply means universal. Universal. But Pentecost has to do with a yearly feast of Jewish people. It's better to be a Catholic than to be a Pentecost. <laughs> I am a Catholic, but I'm not a Roman Catholic. Because Roman Catholic is Itali it Italiano. Papito. <laughs> I'm not Roman Catholic, but I am a Catholic. I belong to the Universal Church of God. Alright, so the word Pentecost has to do with the Feast of the Jews. Which basically had to do with Jesus. Because Jesus is the celebrator of Pentecost. Jesus is the reality of the feast the feast was celebrated in israel to point to jesus so jesus is a celebrator of the feast it was celebrated in the old testament as types and shadows but was made real in the giving of the spirit it became a reality in the giving of the spirit so jesus fulfilled just one pentecost and that was his last pentecost in that Acts chapter 2 where we read, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
as the spirit gave them utterance so we read in ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 be filled with the spirit then in acts chapter 2 verse 4 they were all filled now what happened in that acts chapter 2 is a fulfillment of prophecy that is there was a prophecy in scripture about what happened in acts chapter 2 and we're going to read two prophecies or we're going to read two promises given by god through his prophets about the spirit now before we read the prophecies look at second corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 to 20. second corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 to 20. but as god is true our word toward you was not yea and nay for the son of god jesus christ who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, unto the glory of God by us. In him yea and amen means in him fulfilled and fulfilled. Yea means fulfilled, amen means fulfilled by who jesus christ so jesus is the fulfillment of the promise in the old testament in john chapter 5 verse 39 jesus said to the jews you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me so the scriptures testify of jesus in other words the testimony of Jesus is in the Old Testament where it points to Jesus. Look at Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Revelation chapter 19 verse number 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. In other words, what identifies a prophet in the Old Testament is his prophecy of, is the content of his prophecy about Jesus. What identifies a prophet in the Old Testament is the content of his prophecy concerning Jesus. That is, Jesus is not one of the messages of the Bible. Jesus is the central figure of the scriptures. The Bible is a Christocentric book. That is why John chapter 1 verse 1 calls Jesus the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 10, he came unto his own and his own received him not. Verse 12, but as many as receive him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God. Verse 13, which we are born not of flesh, nor of blood, nor of the will of man, but of God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh. The word, the word of God is a person. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word. Word there means the logos. Logos, logic, the intent. Jesus is the message. He is the thought pattern of God in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Put it up for me. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. We are examining the promise. Hebrews 4 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible tells us in Revelation 19, 13, that Jesus' name is called the word of God. Put it up. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. His name is called the word of God. So every prophet's ministry is indicated by their revelation of Jesus. So the revelation is either a promise or... A prophecy in Luke chapter 24 we know the background on the way to Emmaus he made the disciples and he said to them what are you guys discussing and they said to oh, Jesus are you a stranger in town have you not heard about Jesus a good guy that was killed the other day Jesus turned to them and he said to them oh fool slow of heart 
to believe all that the prophets have spoken all that the prophets did you observe that so all that the prophets have spoken is what jesus is about to point out ought not christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory next verse i'm beginning at moses and all the prophets all of them he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so the central theme of the scriptures is christ He's the message of the scriptures. In other words, the prophets prophesied about him. Look at Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, verse number 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms, concerning me concerning me look at the next verse all things must be fulfilled 45 then open it their understanding that they might understand the scriptures things must be fulfilled all things all things must be brought to pass so the scripture centers around him the prophecies and the prophets centers around christ so if he is the promise fulfilled and Christ is the prophecy fulfilled, he is the promise fulfilled, he is the prophecy fulfilled, then we need to find out what the promise is about. In Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 where we read, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost when the day of Pentecost was fully come and began to speak in tongues. So I will show you two of those promises or prophecies in the Old Testament and we will focus on those two in this teaching. First prophecy, Ezekiel 36, 24. Ezekiel 36, 24. Please pay attention. For I will take you from among the hidden and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you next verse a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you on the line within you will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you an heart of flesh 27 and i will put my spirit within you if, if your bible is mine i will have under, i will underline that my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them what will he put in them he said a new spirit then he says a new heart then he classify it by saying my spirit a new spirit a new heart then my spirit okay I will pour my spirit within you. So what will he give to people who believe? His spirit. His spirit will be given to everyone who believes in the gospel. All right? Come to Joel chapter 2 verse 28. Joel chapter 2 verse number 28. Or Joel chapter 2 verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. What did we read in Ezekiel? My spirit. Here he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh. So we have two words. Realize both of them are prophecies and promises. About his spirit. But one says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. My spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. The other one says, I will pour out my spirit upon you and you shall prophesy. One says, my spirit within and cause you to walk in my statues. The other one, I will pour my spirit upon and you shall prophesy. Are we still in the building? Alright. So you will prophesy. Before, to, 
before we go to what both of them mean, remember he's not referring to two spirits. It's the same one spirit. So I will pour out, I will put my spirit. I will pour out upon, I will put my spirit within. Two of them, all right? So we'll find out what they mean. Jesus also spoke about his spirit in John chapter 14. And I'm going to, you know, give you a lot of scripture for you to study them because you, you study and meditate on them. You go back and look at them again so that you, you are established in this truth. John 14 verse 16. <clears throat> John chapter 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The word comforter is the Greek word parakletos. Parakletos means a strengthener or a teacher. One who has expert and absolute knowledge. A paraclete, one who has expert and absolute knowledge. You will understand that by, by, by what Jesus will do. You will understand what he was saying. All right? He didn't say, I will give you a comforter who will be hugging you. He didn't say, I will give you a comforter who will be pampering you. He said, I will give you a comforter. He will guide you into all the truth. That means the comforter is not coming to hug you. He's coming to teach you. He's coming to strengthen you and equip you. Not to pamper you. Oh, Holy Spirit, please just come now. Please just come now. He is not coming to hug you. He's coming to teach you. <laughs> He's coming to teach you. Are we still in the building? And he will abide with you forever. All right? John 14, 17. Please pay attention. John 14, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So a man that is not born again cannot receive the spirit. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So now he shall be with you and in you. Which of the prophecy was Jesus referring to? Ezekiel or Joel? Ezekiel. I will put my spirit within you. And you will walk in my statues. Alright? Now, look at John 15, 26. John 15, 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Look at John chapter 16, verse 7. John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Next verse. When he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Alright, same thing he's talking about still. John 4, 14. John 4, 14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That is salvation. John chapter 3 verse 3 except a man be born again he cannot he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5. Watch verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So water, which is symbolic of the spirit. Which is symbolic of the spirit. Look at John 7, 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst." Let him come unto me and drink. Next verse. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 39. But this spake he of the spirit. So water speaks of the spirit. Is it clear now? Water speaks of the spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified so we have seen jesus in the book of john emphatically talking about the spirit within 
the spirit within. Look at Luke 24 verse 48. Luke 24 verse 48. And you are witnesses of these things. Verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. I send the promise upon, upon you. Ruth, I mean Luke wrote the book of Acts. So look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Lots of scriptures good for your health. Luke wrote the book of Acts, Acts 1 8. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You'll be endued with power from on high. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and under the uttermost part of the earth. So which of the prophecies is this one? My, my spirit upon Joel. Okay. Joel or Joel. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. You cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. I have had people who are born again say they want to receive the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit after you have received the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot have salvation without the Holy Spirit. So let's do some detailed explanation on Jesus in John 16. He clearly says that it is the Holy Spirit that will convince the world of sin. He will convince the world of sin. So there is no salvation without the Holy Spirit. There is no salvation without the Holy Spirit. You cannot be saved without the Holy Spirit. What you did when you believed the gospel is you received the message of the Spirit. When you believed the gospel, you received the message of the Spirit. There can be no salvation without the Holy Spirit. So what you did when you believed the gospel was that you received the message of the Spirit. Look at 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1, 2, and 3. 1 Corinthians 12. Now, concerning spirituals, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Verse 2. You know that you are Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cost, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So how did you get born again? Romans chapter 10 verse 8. Romans chapter 10 verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. No man can say Jesus is Lord, the Lord Jesus, but by the Holy Ghost. And shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So to say Jesus is Lord will be by what? The Holy Ghost. And when you say Jesus is Lord, what happens? You are saved. So who saved you? The Holy Ghost. Who did you receive when you got born again? You received the Holy Ghost. Is it clear now? Yeah, you receive the Holy Ghost. So every believer that is saved has the Holy Ghost in him. Has the Holy Ghost in him. So clearly, no one can be saved but by the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that brings the message of salvation to us. It's the Holy Spirit that convinces the heart to be saved. It's the Holy Spirit that works the regeneration because regeneration is the work of the spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So what does it mean to be born again? To be born of the spirit. Symbolically, to be born of water. You know there's a word called the Kai rule of Bible interpretation. Kai. Applying the TKS rule. The TKS rule is called Kai. Where you have and. And the and is not a conjunction. But an explanation. And as an explanation. TKS. Let me give you an instance. First Corinthians 13, 14. 
First Corinthians thirteen fourteen. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse number fourteen. First Corinthians, the guy on the computer is wasting our time. Chapter thirteen, verse number fourteen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians thirteen fourteen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship. Is there sweet in that scripture? Is there sweet? There's no sweet too. You like sweet too much. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship. Second Corinthians, sorry. Second Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the sweet communion. Is there sweet? No sweet. It is we that used to put, read our sweetness into the Bible. <laughs> And the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Now we think it is three things, but it was not three things. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. And the love of God is the fellowship of the Spirit or the communion of the Spirit. So what it simply means is that each statement explains the order. The grace of our Lord Jesus, which is the love of God. The love of God, which is the communion of the Holy Spirit. So the communion of the Holy Spirit is the grace. Did you see that? The communion of the Holy Spirit is the love. It is not supposed to be a benediction after service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion. No. The grace of our Lord Jesus is the love of God. The love of God is the communion. And what we did in the service was the communion of the spirit. So by implication, when we were communing with the spirit, we were sharing the grace in the service. It's not a benediction. It is the body of the service. Is it clear? So that's why we don't, we don't share grace as a benediction. What we are doing right now as I'm teaching, what is happening? We are sharing the grace because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So as I'm bringing you knowledge, what am I sharing all over? Grace. So by the time the service is over, without even benediction, we have already shared the grace. And if you are waiting to share communion at the end, you have missed the service. Because the communion already happened while the service is going on. Teaching good here. Yeah? So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God. The love of God is the communion of the Holy Ghost. Are you, are you with me in the building? So when you are born of the spirit, you are born of water symbolically or you are born again. So when we say you are born again, what we mean is you are born of the life of God. You are already a carrier of his nature. You are already a carrier of his spirit. Yeah. Born again means you are a carrier of God's nature. You are a carrier of God's spirit. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of what? Of the Holy Ghost. Which is where? In you. So where is the Holy Ghost? In you. Your body is his temple. So right now, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. You can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. Look at Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse number 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us how? By the washing of regeneration. That is renewing of the Holy Ghost. So the washing of regeneration is the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And that is what the water symbolizes. Born of water means the Holy Ghost will cleanse you. 
that when the Holy Ghost entered you, he cleansed you. And as long as he stays inside you, you are cleansed. Are we teaching here? You are purified because the Holy Ghost indwells you. He lives on your inside. And that's what Ezekiel was talking about. It talks about, I will cleanse you with water. I will sprinkle water upon you. That cleansing is the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. It's not like God cleaned you up, then put his spirit inside. The spirit coming inside is the cleaning. And as long as he's staying inside, he keeps you clean all the time. So by putting his spirit in you, he cleaned you up. The one who cleanses is the spirit. You cannot cleanse yourself. Nobody can purify himself. It's the Holy Spirit that does the cleansing and purifying. How does he do that? By coming to live inside. I will live in you. I will walk in you. So he becomes your nature. Your nature is the Holy Spirit. So from the minute he lives in you, you are now a holy temple. Your body belongs to God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit lives inside. God owns your body. So you cannot be a Christian without the Holy Spirit. No. A Christian asking for the Holy Spirit is in Fantasy Island. Because you already have the Holy Spirit. Look at Romans 8.8 8 as I round up and then we just pray tonight. Romans 8.8. 8. Somebody getting blessed shall bless. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Next verse. But you are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man doesn't have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Say with me, I have the spirit of Christ. I am his. He is mine. I belong to him. The spirit of God with all the gifts and all the fruits lives inside me. Right now, I have all the gifts, all the fruits of the spirit inside me. I didn't hear a good amen. amen. Say with me, I am holy. I am purified. I am sanctified. Because the Holy One lives on my inside. Say, I am the Holy Ghost. We are one. Say, the Holy Spirit is my nature. Say, my nature is of the Spirit of God. So what cannot be found in God cannot be found in me. I have the Spirit of God actively at work in my inside. Say, the Spirit of God is actively at work in my inside. I'm born of the spirit. I live in the spirit. I walk in the spirit. I speak in the spirit. I function in the spirit. I sleep in the spirit. I wake up in the spirit. I operate in the spirit. I pray in the spirit. Anything I do is in the spirit. Because the spirit is my nature. It's not a feeling. It's my reality. Let's blast in tongues for a few seconds. Mondo lo do boro kotos. Breda get the lead bo joko lo do breda katoli na baba. Henge bo rokoto sakala da brena gadangle de bo rokoto seke ya na maha. Henge bo shekele de bebe le goroto sokolo na mambre gadeske teli na manga. Henge le de bo boro da bo shekele de bo rokoto sikala da baba. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Aga ba rokoto sekele de barakata nakaya. Henge bo joko lo do baba barata bali de baba ba. Henge re de bo joko lo do barakate ne. Kele engele boroko to sika le de babara na manegele na mahata ege bo joko lo do boroko to lina mama ya na gadi gele ya ege boroko to sika le de brina gadanga lengro do soko lo do brina katoli de baba ege bo joko lo na maroko to skataya I want you to yield yield to the spirit tonight yield to the Holy Ghost those online on TV on radio just open your mouth open your mouth once you are born of God open your mouth and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, le gosso toli na na, nangra da sokolo do brina gadagere de sekeya, anga baraka tole bereke teli da baraka da sakeya. Oh, 
Look for somebody. Look for one or two persons. Hold them and begin to minister to one another. 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 Go ahead, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rise like an edifice. Rise like an edifice. Higher and higher and higher. Ango bosso tole baraka tenenga. Engele de boja ke. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Boro godo zoko. Enge boro koto sika le baba. Le boro godo jake le ne baya. Le gara de bazo bere de bele de babom boro godo zoko le de boro hota. Engele de bojo kolo do berekete sekeya Enge boloto berekete ne Le boro godo seke lida babara gada zeke le de ma Mambrondo zoko lo do boro kotoske telia Thank you father Listen to me everybody In the name of Jesus Look at me everybody The Bible says Covet the things of the spirit Covet them earnestly Covetousness is a sin but when it comes to spirituals, brother Paul said, covet them. That is desire. Strongly desire to see yourself operating supernaturally. Desire to see yourself operating in miracles. Desire to see yourself lay hands on the sick and they recover. Desire to see yourself function in the supernatural. Desire to see yourself prophesy. Desire to see yourself give a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. Out of a desire inside you, open your mouth and pray. Out of a desire, begin to pray in the spirit. Desire spirituals. Karatobaka. Lego Jokolo no Bosa Kayana. Membra da Zokolo da Babara Gadasa Kelene Maha. Enge bo Jokolo da Boro Godosa Kele. Le breke teke lida Baba Bara Katika lida Balo Lomoho. Enge bo Zokolo da Brina Katana Gaga. Desire, desire, desire. Desire it and I will show you a more excellent way. Rato bere kete niga lada bara kato nege lida baya naga daga. Enge bo Jokolo da Boro, Rakoto be sika la da baba, Lego rato sika la da mama, Nangranda chocolo da bolo, Lega rato sekeli da baba, Agaba chocolo da boro koto sekeya, Lega chocolo do, Ege ba 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 chocolo do, Angele ne mosata, Angele ne baroko tena, Hey, go ahead, go ahead, Rato be sekere tekele da boro, Lega desire and receive it 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 moza kalanda bosoto mozo dole de borokotonia mozo kolodo borokoto seke yanamaha Enge bo jokolo do boro koto sekele de baba le gorodo jokolo do boro koto sekele ya le gorodo bo jokele ne boro koto sekele ana. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, one more prayer. They said, "And Lord, now grant unto your servant that with all boldness they may preach your word." And that signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy son Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. I like you to ask for boldness, Father. I receive boldness, boldness to preach your word, boldness to manifest your glory, boldness to demonstrate your kingdom, boldness to manifest your power. Enge boroko to sekele de baba Lebro sakale de be La bota magele tegele de gara Agara to sekele diba Lediba 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 Egeba sokala na gale de gara Kataka Shakola de baba Shakola de baba Boldness 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 to speak your word 
boldness to speak your word. Ange bo shota lada, ange bo shoka lada ba, ange lere bo shota la, la boroko to sekala. That with all boldness we may speak your word. Ange bo shota la, ange rene bo shota. Ege bo shoka lada ba ba, ege lere bo shota la, ege rene bo shota la ba. Ask for boldness, boldness to speak the word. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Pastor Praise, please come up. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Gabriel, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Raymond, and Pastor Clinton, come forward. Just climb this first step. Come, for, come forward. Let's minister to all of you. Just line up here. Line up here. Line up here. And if you desire, let your prayer come out with desire. Stand, stand, stand. Let your prayer come out with a desire. With a heart of desire. Father, boldness. Father, I receive the miraculous. Father, I receive power. Father, I go forth in power. I go forth in signs, wonders, and miracles. Open your mouth and pray. Let the show color the boss. Pray with a heart of hunger. Pray with a burning desire. Let's lay hands on them and minister to them. Let's release. Let's release. Let go so talada baba. Let brata so talada baba. Boldness to preach your word. Boldness to declare your word. Boldness to proclaim your word. Let the zeal. Let the zeal for ministry. Let the fire for ministry. Let the fire for ministry. Let the fire to minister. Let the fire to minister. Agaba shotolanama. That by stretching forth our hands to heal. Let go roto sikalanama. Bebre de gesotala. Egelerebo shoko. La gara to saka. 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 La garato saka, 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 la garato saka. Haga, 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 haga. Ege bo soka la raba. Babrata saka, 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 babrata saka. O shakama, 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 o shakama. Ege bo soka la raba saya. Oh, oh, Mozakada, 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 Mozakada. I steer it up, steer up, Majokalea, 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 Majokalea. Majokalea, mambra da sokele rebo, me da lata dada, me da lato dada, me da lato dada, mambra ndo sokele rebo. If I have not touched you, come close. Anybody I have not laid my hands on, agebo zokaya da, agebo zekada, agebo zekada, agebo zekada, mambra da sokele rebo, babra gada zakele ya, babore koto seke ya. Babro gado sekeleva, mambro gado sekele, 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 mambro gado sekele. Bere koto shakayada. Heke bo sokolo da bos, bo brodo sokolo da bos, bo brogo do sokolo da bos. Babroko doso kolo da bos, babroko doso kaboro dos, babra na soka la da baba, mangele da bos, 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 bebratosa, 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 bebratosa. Hola baha, hola da baha. Oh Zakaya, ex 
exploits, 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 moshatatele, exploits, 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 exploits. They shall do exploits. Mosake to balata. Mosake to balata. Mosake to balata. Rita mane gelesa. Rita male neba shota laba. Breshota la dabaha. Breshota la dabaha. Mosokolo da bos. Mosokolo da bos. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Lift your hands and begin to praise him as you go back to your seats. Those that can move, move. Those that cannot stand, leave them on the floor. If they cannot stand, just leave them. When they are done with the Holy Ghost, they will go back. Just leave them. Those that cannot stand. Those that can stand, stand. Those that cannot, just leave them there. Boshakaya the house. Praise you, Father. Just begin to praise him. See yourself changing lives. See yourself preaching the gospel. See signs, wonders, and miracles following you. See the word of God coming out of your mouth with power. Zikol the boss. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Who la badoga zogoga? He ga badoga dogo bo shaka ya. Ne ano shaka. Ne ano shakea. Ne ano shakea. Ne ano shakea. Naya, Neshokea, Naya, Neshokea, Mendalada Baba Baba Babas, Brosa Katana. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. 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 Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for those listening on radio. Thank you for miracles happening in homes. Miracles happening all over the world. Those watching on television, all the social media community. Thank you. Your power is at work all over the world as the water covers the sea. And Father, we rejoice. Where there were sickness and diseases, they are healed. Healed by the Spirit of God. Bodies be restored. Bodies be quickened. Bodies be quickened in the name of Jesus. And Father, we rejoice where people need miracle, receive miracles. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer shouts that amen on a note of finality. Amen. Hallelujah. In another one or two minutes, I'll be joining Mr. Michael Bush and we'll be answering questions and responding to your phone calls and bringing clarity to you by the word. I want to take up your offerings quickly wherever you're watching or listening. The banking details are on the screen, both on social media and on television. Mr. Bush will read the banking details for those on radio. And everybody else in the building, we give in faith, we give in honor, we give in acknowledgement of the goodness of God towards us. And we also give so that through us, the gospel will reach the ends of the earth. I want to thank those who made commitments yesterday or have started redeeming their commitments. Thank you for helping to help us get the budget taken care of, especially to get our station on another platform. I want you to know that it will be done. We're standing in faith and nations will be turned over by the gospel of Christ. Father, we pray that as we give tonight, we give in faith. Our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And thank you for the blessing that is upon this house. And the blessing that is all over the continents, the spirit of God, stirring up the people of God to do greater things in the days to come. We give you praise for glory and grace that is upon this atmosphere and upon everyone that is in this service tonight. And all those in the house centers and campuses around the world. Everyone impacted by the spirit of God. We give you praise for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.